We're now beginning to understand that light is so very important beyond our ability to see. Architecture without any aesthetical qualities is very dangerous to the mental health of people. The revolutionary attempts of modern architecture to permeate buildings with natural light and fresh air aim to convey the healthful benefits of nature to as many rooms as possible. With the portion of daylight this is absolutely essential. Welcome to the Daylight Award, celebrating cross-disciplinarity and people working with a daylight and researching in the effects of daylight. Under normal circumstances, we would invite you to celebrate this event with us, but unfortunately, COVID-19 has put a stop to that. However, the good news is that you can sit in the comfort of your own home and enjoy uh, three very informative films about the very diverse laureates of 2020. The three foundations were all founded by Willem Kahn Rasmussen, but they are not identical. Their statues cover very different areas. This is reflected in the three laureates of 2020. An architect, a neuroscientist and a photographer, each focused and committed in their own field, but sharing the goal, demonstrating to us the power of daylight and its applications to humans. All three selected by an international jury. A jury consisting only of people who have had a professional interest in how daylight affects humans and nature. Russell Foster's main interest is and has been for a very long time understanding how the circadian rhythm and the sleep-wake rhythm are generated and modulated. For 40 years, Russell Foster has worked to understand and to demonstrating his findings. His perhaps most recognized scientific discovery is that the eye plays a crucial role in setting the circadian clock in mice as well as in humans. Without vision, the brain does not receive the information it needs to set the circadian clock correctly. Much of what we know today about this is thanks to the research carried out by Russell Foster at Oxford University. And clearly Russell Foster is a, an outstanding academic. He opened up uh, 20 years of another type of research that ultimately, through other people's work, starts to have an impact on daylight research. We're now trying to understand how light interacts with a master clock. We know there's a new receptor, but how does it actually change the clock? What that's led to is ways in which we can fool the clock in thinking it's seen light. So why would we want to do that? Well, if you have no eyes, or if your eyes have experienced massive damage, you've lost the ability to set the clock to the external world. And so we've been working with Blind Veterans UK, and they will be the first clinical group that will try these new drugs, um, which will hopefully give back these extraordinary individuals a sense of time. We are very proud to be able to celebrate Russell Foster and his research through the Daylight Reward, and this way contribute to distributing uh, the results of his work to an ever larger audience. It's been very interesting with the press releases about the award. They've gone around the world. And, you know, in my department, the Nuffel Department of Clinical Neurosciences, it's sort of flagged up the whole relationship between neuroscience and architecture in general. So I think that, that there's, there's a lot of opportunities for architects and, and uh, people like myself uh, to work closely together. And I think that's going to increasingly be the case as we go through uh, this decade. Six hours of daylight and one official hour of sunlight. These are the general terms of living in Finland in the winter. In the summertime, on the other hand, the Finns experience up to 20 hours of daylight each day. Architect Juha Levishka 
has captured the Finnish love for natural light throughout his work. Be it his work with vertical daylighting, or the way he almost materializes daylight is indeed unique, and only two of many good reasons that he is awarded the Daylight Award. Leviska creates much more a universe, a very poetic universe. It's quite extraordinary, this, just the fineness of the elements and the layering of the elements you sort of drawn into it or pulled into it because of the scale. Uh, and uh, it sort of embraces you as a building. Many people think that it is something very special. To results, uh, a bicycle shelter is also important. <laughs> we are very proud to be able to honor Juha Levishka today and present him with the Daylight Award 2020. I believe that this award is the most important award which exists concerning architects. I am extremely happy to get it. Some people work all their lives to uncover one topic. A topic sometimes so vast and multidimensional that one life might not be even be enough to cover it all. This year, the three foundations have decided to give out what we like to call a Lifetime Achievement Award. The jury chose a person who has worked with the meaning of and the importance of daylight through almost 50 years. Henry Plummer has opened the eyes of several generations of architects to the importance and the meaning of daylight in the most magnificent architecture across the world. Through his words and his photography, he has brought as important people as Frank Lloyd Wright, Sanar, Le Corbusier, and also Jan Utzon, who was the first recipient of the Daylight Award 40 years ago, to thousands of people across the world. We are honored and proud to be able to pay tribute to the author and the photographer, Henry Plummer. Plummer no doubt has a, what looks like a lifelong love affair with light. Through his photography, he has recorded uh, buildings and, uh, and uh, daylight phenomena, which most of the academic world would not know without uh, Henry's uh, brilliant photography. The capacity of light to penetrate matter and temporarily produce an inward glow. An intensity of being a timeless source of human wonder. At such moments, light exerts a mesmerizing, even miraculous power to transform otherwise mute objects and dull materials and make them shine with an elevated beauty and sense of being more fully alive. Throughout history, we find examples of buildings being rendered luminous by the manipulation of materials to increase their sensitivity to light. <laughs> 